Good day, I'm Maile Maziba. Welcome back to our channel. Today we are continuing with our CIR113 module. We're looking at semester test 1 and we're looking at the 2018 version of the semester test 1. So we start with question 1 and we are looking at question 1.1. 1 .1. It says convert the dynamic viscosity of oxygen of O2 from 1.9 kilograms per meter second to one to pound mole this is not pound mass this is pound mole to pound mole per inch hour so for us to be able to do that conversion let me just rewrite um, what we are given here we have 1.9 kilograms per meter second so for us to move from kilograms per meter second to pound mole per inch per hour, we're going to need to convert the mass to pound mole and convert the meters to inch to inches and convert the seconds to hours. So let's start with the kilograms. So first of all, for us to get from kilograms to pound mole, we need to start from kilograms to pound. So we can just say multiply by the ratio of pound and the ratio of kilograms and pound is that um, one kilograms is actually rather one pound is actually let me just write here that one pound one pound mass all over zero point four five three six kilograms. So one pound mass is actually zero point four five three six kilograms. By this then we have cancelled the kilograms we are left with the pounds but now we know that they want it in pound mole so for us to get that we then go into move from pound mass to pound mole and with that said we use the molar mass of uh, O2 which is actually 32 so we're going to say um, let's say For us to do that, we're going to say uh, one pound mole, right, all over 32 pound mass. With this, then we have cancelled the pound mass and we are left with the pound mole. So now we are done with the top part, which is the pound mole. Now we come to the meters. When you come to, to moving from meters to inch, um, the first thing that we need to know is that we can move from uh, meters to centimeters and then move from centimeters to inches. So moving from uh, moving from meters to centimeters, we know the ratio of centimeters and meters is 1 is to 100. So we know that 100 centimeters, no, let me say 1 meter, 1 meter all over 100 centimeters. So now we have cancelled the meters, right? We are left with centimeters. However, they want it in inches. So for us to move from inches, rather to move from centimeters to inches, we go to the ratio of centimeters to inches. We know that there's actually, uh, we know that one inch is actually 2.54 centimeters. So we can just say 2.54 centimeters all over one inch so with this we have cancelled the centimeters we are left with the inches if you can look at our um, mathematic or arithmetic here you will realize that we are left with pound mole per inch per hour right rather per, per, per second not per hour so now we are left with the second we need to move from the second to the hour and we do the same thing we know that the ratio of the second to the hour is 3600 seconds right I hope it's visible that is a second it's not a five so 3600 seconds all over one hour right so with this we have cancelled the second right and now we know that this is equals to um, if you do your calculation it will give you 
three, right? And if you look at all what we have cancelled and what remains, we know and at the top we have pound mole per, uh, we are left with per inch hour. So that then wraps up question 1.1. 1. 1. So going to question 1.2, they say convert 0 0.77 BTU per pound mass degrees Duncan to SI units. Now, if you look at this, you can notice that it's actually a heat capacity. It's actually, it's actually a heat capacity. And we know the BTU is actually the energy. And then we know this is the mass. And the, the change in this is actually the change in temperature. So for us to convert from that, let me just rewrite it here. 0 0.77 BTU per pound mass degrees Duncan. So we can start with the BTU. We know that the ratio of BTU and joules, or the SI, before that, the SI units for energy, it's actually joules. And we know that the ratio of BTU and joules is that, let me just write it here. We know that 10.55 joules are actually equals to 1 BTU. 1 BTU. Now with this, we have cancelled the BTU. We are left with joules per pound mass degrees Duncan. So now we come to the pound mass. We need to move from the pound mass to kilograms because the SI units for mass is kilograms. With that said, then we say we go to the ratio of pound mass and uh, kilograms. We know that one pound mass, one pound mass, or one pound, one pound mass or one pound is actually 0 0.4536 kilograms. With this then, we have cancelled the pound mass, right? Now we are left with the degree Franken. Now on this units, we know the degree Franken is actually not necessarily, it talks about the temperature, but it's actually change in temperature. So it's not so much of a fuse as far especially because it's just the change in temperature so with this we're going to just look at um the ratio of the change in moving the change in temperature from degrees Rankine to kelvin so we'll just say and we know that 1.8 degrees Rankine are actually equals to 1 kelvin now with this we have cancelled the degrees Rankine we are left with the Kelvin. And if you use your calculator there, you'll find that you have 3 point, oh sorry, not 3 point, it's 3,223.61 joules per kilograms Kelvin. So that is our 1.2. Now our 1.3 says express 0 0.43 pound dal in SI units. So first of all, I need to mention that one pound dal, one pound dal is actually equals to one pound mass feet per second squared. So it's one pound mass feet per second squared. Now we need to express this in SI units. So how do we do that? Let me rewrite this. Let me say one pound mass feet per second squared, right? So now we need to move to SI units. Firstly, what we know for sure is that, um, like we know that, the, okay, we, we're going to start with converting the mass from pound mass to SI units. And there, uh, the units for mass in SI units is kilograms. So we'll just, do what we've been doing all along so it's we're gonna have um, 0 0.4536 0 0.4536 kilograms all over one pound mass so this then cancels the pound mass we are left with the kilograms so now we go to the feet we know that the ratio of meters and feet especially because this is distance or length. So the, 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 
the SI units for length or distance is actually meters. So moving from feet to meters, we know the ratio of meters and feet. We know that 0 0.3048 meters are actually the same as 1 feet, right? So with this ratio, then we have cancelled the feet. We are left with um, the second squared. So second is actually an SI unit for time. So we don't really need to convert or change the second. With that said, we will leave the second here. So now if you use your calculator, you will get 0 0.13, 0 0.13826 kilograms meters per second squared, right? Or you can just say it's equals to 0 0.13 826 newtons. This is because kilograms meters per second squared is actually um, the unit for force, which is new, uh, the, it's actually the newtons, which is, which is the unit un, the unit for force. So now going to our 1.4, it says if it is known that one McDonald cheeseburger contains 0 0.3 kilocalories, what is this in accepted SI units? So now for us to get that, let me just write 0 0.3 kilocalorie. So one thing we can we know is that one that one cal actually calorie actually talks about the energy, and we know that one calorie is actually 4.187 joules. So we can just convert from calorie to joules by simply saying 4.18. 4.187 joules, right, all over one calorie, right? So as simple as that. And now if you use your calculator, it gives you 1.2561 kilojoules. So that is actually a 1.4. Now for now for our 1.4, question 1.5, it says... What is the molality of a 2 liter 8 molar Na2CO3? Right? Solution. I forgot to write a solution, solution here. Right? Let me just write solution. They say, what is the molality of a 2 liter 8 molar Na2CO3 solution? Now, they also give us information that the SG of the solution is 2.4. So, firstly, let me just write the equation for molality. Molality is equals to moles of solute all over kilogram of solvent. So this is actually the equation for molality. The solute here is actually what has been dissolved. And the solvent, as usual, we know that it's actually what what dissolves everything or in something that they put something inside of it. I hope that is much more clearer. So now um, they say, I just want to make a few analysis about the solution. They say the solution is 2 liter 8 molar Na2CO3 solution. So one thing we know is that 8 molar Na2CO3, right? That is equivalent to 8 moles of Na2CO3 per liter. Per liter of solution. This is important that I highlight. So, 8 molar solution or this concentration, it basically means that in one liter of the whole solution, there's actually eight moles of Na2CO3. Now, they are telling us that there's actually two liters. So, how many moles? That then means that, let me just write here that for two liters, for a, sorry, for a two liter solution, for a two liter solution, there are There are 16 moles of 
Na2CO3. Because if 8 mole Na2CO3 means that there's actually 8 moles of Na2CO3 solution, Na2CO3 per liter of solution, then in a 2 liter solution, then that means it's going to be 2 times this. Because if there's 8 moles per liter, then for 2 liters, it's going to be 16 moles, right? So that is something that I needed to explain. Now, with that said, we need, remember, we need the moles of solute. Solute, the moles of solute, and solute at this point, at this time, is actually Na2CO3 because that is what has been dissolved, right? Per kilogram solvent. So, before we go far, I want us to calculate the density of the solution. So, um, let me just write it down. Density of solution. So we're gonna just take it step by step until we arrive to where we want to go. Density of solution is equals to 2.54 kilograms per liter. We took this from the SG, right? So now with this said, we know very well that density is equals to mass all over volume, right? And then we know that the mass, therefore, the mass, the mass of the solution is equals to density times volume times yeah. Vol the mass of the solution is going to be the density of the solution times the volume of the solution, and we know the density is two point five four kilograms per liter multiplied by. We know the volume is 2 liter, right? It's 2 liters. Okay. So, there's a reason why we are taking this approach. Remember, we need the kilograms of solvent. Inside the solution, inside this solution where we know already that it's a 2 liter solution with 16 moles of Na2CO3. We know that in that solution, there's actually the solvent and the solute, right? The solute is actually Na2CO3. So, if we can get the kilogram now for us to get the kilograms or the mass of the solvent we're gonna first calculate the mass of the solution right so let me say so now if you do that it gives you 5.08 kilograms so now we know that the mass of the total solution is actually uh, 5.08 is 5.08 kilograms so now we go to the mass of Na2CO3. So we don't really know much about the solvent, which is something where that Na2CO3 has been dissolved into. However, if we can get the mass, the total mass, and also get the mass of the solute, which is Na2CO3, then it's gonna be easy. You can just use the difference to say, okay, if the total mass is this, and we know that this, the Na2CO3 is this much, then the difference or the remainder then becomes the mass of the solvent the kilograms of the solvent so that is the approach we're gonna use now we have calculated the mass of the total solution the same the next thing we do we calculate the mass of Na2CO3 so we say mass of Na2CO3 is equals to remember we have the number of moles right and then if we have the number of moles and we, can, we know that we can use a, a, a periodic table to get the molar mass of Na2CO3 then it shouldn't be difficult for us to get the mass of Na2CO3. And with that said, we know that that mass is number of moles over molar mass is equal to the number of moles is 16, right? 16 moles multiplied by the molar mass of uh, Na2CO3 is 106. So uh, that is going to give us... Let me let me put the units here just so that there's no confusion. So we're gonna have six sixteen moles, right? Multiply by a one oh six grams per gram mole, right? Um, I think it would be easier if I also put gram moles here, right? So we have sixteen gram moles. Multiply by 106 grams per gram mole. And if you use your calculator, that gives you 1696 grams, right? And which is equals to 1.696 kilograms. This then is actually the mass of Na2CO3.
that we got from the number of moles of Na2CO3. So if this then becomes the case, we can then calculate the kilograms of the solvent or the mass of the solvent. And that shouldn't be difficult because we can simply just say, uh, let me do this a little bit. We can simply say the mass, the mass of the solvent is equal to the mass the mass of the solution right uh, minus the mass of the solute which is Na2CO3 so the mass of the solution minus the mass of the solute and then that becomes 5.08 kilograms minus 1.696 kilograms and if you use your calculator that gives you 3.384 kilograms so now we we've managed to calculate uh, the mass of the solvent and remember we i highlighted earlier that um, molality is actually most of solute over kilogram solvent and fortunately, the mass of the solvent is already in kilograms, so it won't, it won't be a problem. So now, um, now that we have sorted out the mass of, of, of the solvent, then we just need to go focus on the moles of the solute. So let me go back to the original uh, equation. Molality is equal to moles of solute right all over kilograms of solvent right so now if you do this we know the moles of solute already we have established that it's actually 16 moles so it's 16 moles right all over right what a uh, 3.38 3.384 kilograms right so now if you use your calculator it's gonna give you 4.7281 moles Na2CO3 right per kilogram solvent. So this then wraps up our 1.5. So now our 1.6 says convert one poise to SI units. First of all, we know that one poise, we know that one poise is equal to one gram per centimeter second. So that is basically one poise. So if you're gonna convert this to SI units, let me just rewrite the poise here. So it's one gram per centimeter second right so if you're gonna convert one point to 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 si units we know that grams we're gonna need to convert it to kilograms centimeters i need to go be in meters and second we'll just leave it at second because you know the time the si unit for time is actually seconds so then we can just say how do we convert the grams we know that one kilogram is equals to 1000 grams so we cancel the gram we are left with the kilograms we multiply we go to the centimeters we know that 100 centimeters are equals to one meter right so with that said then we can cancel the centimeters and then we know that okay no we don't have the second we don't need to convert and if you use your calculator that gives you 0 0.1 kilograms per meter second so this then becomes our question one of our semester test one the 2018 version so i'm gonna be uploading a uh, also question two of it unfortunately i wanted to upload both question one and two but it's gonna be very long this video is already 25 meters alone 25 minutes alone question one so i'm gonna upload it alone and then i'm gonna make up question two also and then upload it alone all three so thank you guys for your time. Stay blessed.